I'm Fred Wilkinson, Chief Editor of the National Provisioner. Today I'm speaking with Kathy Risch. She is with the Acosta Group. Kathy, thanks for joining me today. We're going to be talking about grilling. Um, to get things started, could you talk a little bit about uh, what proteins are trending for grilling this summer? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me, Fred. I wanted to share some insights from our Acosta Group shopper study that we did on uh, grilling activity, basically some attitudes and behaviors. We we actually took a look at, we have a shopper community of about 40,000 40, consumers and we do research throughout the year, but we really do like to focus in on seasonal studies and attitudes. So this particular study focused on um, both what they're doing on the grilling occasion, as well as how they uh, behave at retail in terms of what they're buying and attitudes. So when we stepped back and asked what they were um, actually grilling on a typical grilling occasion, and you're going to see me, I'm going to kind of bring in some of my statistics, if that's okay, throughout um, throughout the interview, is, um, and we do this study every year. So um, I do actually have a bit of trending, and to focus specifically on what protein they're grilling um, we actually do see, of no surprise, hamburgers come out on top with 89% of grillers grilling hamburgers. So that's always going to be number one. Uh, but that's been that. That's not new news. Um, I think it's just a good reminder that hamburgers number one, chicken number two, and then hot dogs, sausages, or bratwurst number three are all the you know 80% or higher of grilling households are grilling those meats. Um, but there are some interesting trends popping up, and um, feel free to ask me more specifics. But when we get into uh, actual some other types of meats, we see that the younger consumers, and this is both the Gen Z and millennial generation, are experimenting with more and new and different types of meats. And it's not just uh, fish, pork, or shellfish, but they're bringing in other meat alternatives, plant-based whether that's burgers or hot dogs, looking at those uh, non-meat options. And so we see that though, in particular, growing among the younger consumers. Okay, and just to be clear, when you say burgers, I presume you're talking about the traditional kind of ground beef style burger. For yeah, those absolutely. Okay, well, given that uh, uh, shoppers, particularly the younger demographics are maybe looking to try something new, what has that meant for uh, flavorings, you know, marinade sauces, inclusions, et cetera, for uh, uh, grilled protein items? Well, people continue to look for the, the number one reason they actually grill is for the taste and flavor. And that's just a given reason for grilling. So um, they do find that the flavor that uh, grilling brings out of the meat is already a benefit. But in terms of what they add to the meat, in terms of sauces and marinades and seasonings, a lot of, again, the traditional things rise to the top, like barbecue sauce is the number one. 68% of people are grilling with barbecue sauce, salt and pepper, the number one and two, like the top seasoning. Um, and then we get into the marinades and dry rubs. Um, we do see some growth in some of the hotter sauce. So looking at hot sauces, um, I actually wanted to call out again that it tends to be a younger trend that the younger consumers are experimenting um, a little bit more, not only with different hot sauces, but even um, some of the ethnic flavors like Asian sauces, uh, different flavors of barbecue sauce and wing sauce. But when it comes to the actual spice level, that's another area where um, the, the trend is, is growing with hot and spicy being a desire for the marinade. And the Gen Z and millennials are um, actually looking for something that's not just moderate or mild, but really looking at that much higher end of the hot and spicy scale. When we talk about grilling, we kind of assume we're talking about backyard cookout affairs, but it, it can also be an opportunity for uh, food service operators to kind of elevate their protein offerings as well. Um, what uh, 
what has uh, your research uncovered for uh, trends for food service as far as grilling goes? So we didn't look per se at what are the specific items that are popping at food service for grilling. We do know though that a lot of these flavor trends can be leveraged by food service. So food service operators continue to compete for that, um, that share of meal occasion or share of stomach as some people like to call it. Um, people are continuing to say they're dining out less according to our research that has been going on for several years with inflation and menu inflation at food service continues to rise. And so there's still that challenge of, are people gonna grill at home? Or are they gonna go out? So when, when the weather's nicer, people are grilling more and the, um, the desire and intention to grill is even stronger this year, particularly with the younger consumers who um, are saying they're gonna grill even more this summer. So food, um, food service operators, I think have an opportunity to really tap into that occasion and provide the flavors that I mentioned, some of the variety of flavors that they're seeking. The one thing I would offer up is not just the, um, whether it's hot and spicy or new and different flavors, there's a whole separate piece of research we just did on fresh prepared foods, talking about that food service occasion and anything in terms of new alternatives, variety, um, flavor is going to be something they seek. And in our study, we also um, were asking what, uh, you know, how they get new ideas and you have um, two in five Gen Z and millennials are using recipes when they're grilling. Um, versus just a quarter overall. And so they're looking for that inspiration. And I feel like food service has that opportunity to kind of uh, give ideas and entice wanting to try new flavors, new varieties. So offering what, what are some of those new um, flavors that people could then possibly bring home and, and try at home. Um, they're definitely looking for that experimentation. The only other thing I would add other than, uh, you know, obviously the, the, marinades, the sauces, and the um, spices are a way to, to foods for food service to change it up um, and entice trial is we do also see that the usage of flavored woods when grilling is another way to add unique flavor. So I think food service operators could also leverage that. You know, that's a tougher thing for consumers to automatically just incorporate alternative woods into their grilling. So perhaps that's something that food service could offer is whether it's um, cherry, maple, mesquite, hickory, applewood, cedar, these things can be other ways that um, alternative flavor could be added in. And, you know, of course, with it remaining to be a, a very competitive uh, uh, retail uh, environment with regards to pricing, uh, what has that meant for the popularity of uh, items for grilling uh, lately? Well, it actually makes the at-home occasion much more appealing. More people are cooking at home um, for, for the convenience and the value. And so it is harder for a family's budget to eat out as often. They're still cutting back on eating out. And so the summer season, the spring, summer, the warmer weather season really does bring that opportunity to manage the budget and have more convenient meal solutions um, while still being conscious of their budget. Um, so I think that's probably the biggest indicator. I also think it, it, uh, it has a lot of implications on retail in terms of promotion and promotion needed to really drive the value proposition because when people are grilling, they have to buy a lot of items all at once. And so we do see that the basket fills up pretty quickly when someone's going, we actually um, asked within our study what else they're buying on that grocery trip. And um, there's, you know, you could say at the very top of the list, 71% of people buying items to grill are buying aluminum foil, 67% are buying condiments, 64% are buying paper plates, cups or utensils. And then you get into all the accompaniments, the side dishes that you've got people buying. So I think promotions can bundle this and offer value by helping having the retailer and the manufacturers provide bundled deals where um, people can save money 
when they're having to purchase all of these items together for the grilling occasion. Given those trends that you just uh, listed of uh, consumers wanting uh, more convenience, how has that played into retailers offering more value-added kind of grill-oriented protein items like uh, tree-packed and overwrapped kebabs and that type of thing? In their food service, uh, their own food service business in the perimeter, or are you talking about yeah, just like a, yes, to like a packaged uh, to buy, yes for uh, consumers to to purchase like you know prepared kebabs or burger patties or anything like that some sort of value added protein that's basically packaged and just ready to go straight on the grill it's seasoned spice. Well, it's funny you mentioned that. And I think it's um, almost yes and yes. You know, if you think about there, you have the spectrum of where they're just selling the meat in the meat, uh, the meat counter or the, um, you know, the meat shelf, uh, all the way to the fully prepared kebab that's either ready to go on the grill, or maybe even pre cooked. So I mean, if you think about retailers have that whole spectrum of ready to eat. In our study that we just uh, did that I mentioned on prepared foods, we're seeing that there's big opportunity to provide both, to have it ready to cook, to have it um, fully ready to eat, but also then that I'm gonna cook it all. I'm coming to buy the meat and the ingredients. And so I think it's great for retailers to actually offer the good bun, the the right kind of um, packages, bundles, and and options for all of those occasions, because the consumer is walking into the store with one of those occasions in mind, and so they actually could leverage that. They can have the individual components, whether it's offering the peppers and the meat, um, and the fruit, or other vegetables that would go on the kebab stick, or if they're pre-arranging the kebab, I see those as Two, com- two different worthy packaging opportunities for the retailer. Well, Kathy, thank you very much. I appreciate you taking time to speak with me today. Yeah, thank you.